Your Excellency, Honorable Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, President and Commander-in-Chief of Kenya Defense Forces, Your Excellency Margaret Kenyatta, our First Lady, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government and Representatives of other countries present here. The family of the third President of the Republic of Kenya, led by Judy, Judy Kibaki, Jimmy, David, Anthony, and all the family members, both immediate and extended. Colleagues, leaders present here. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, Kenyans from all walks of life. Today, we are gathered here to mourn the departure and the demise of a great son of our country, our third president. President Mwai Kibaki is a man of great simplicity, brought up in Dunguri village in Odaya. The journey through tending to goats, a journey that made him a great scholar and the finest economist our country ever had. A distinguished public servant that rose through the ranks, both in the opposition and in government. And of course, the greatest president Kenya ever had. We celebrate his achievements, his contribution, and his rich and solid legacy. President Kenyatta has been a good student of President Mwai Kibaki. I know that as his deputy. <laughs> President Mwai Kibaki and his history is the history of our country. He was part of the architects of our independence. He was first, he was part of the first government and made a huge contribution. He was vice president to our second president. He laid a firm foundation both in education, in infrastructure development, and he was the architect of our economy. He sowed the seeds and laid the foundation upon which our fourth president, President Uhuru Kenyatta, build the expansive and extensive and elaborate infrastructure that we see today in our country. I also can see 
his shadow and influence in what is going to become of the fifth president of Kenya. Because I see the conversation around the economy, which President Mwai Kibaki was its architect influencing the coming election. And therefore, when the history of Kenya is written, Mwai Kibaki will not fit into paragraphs. I don't think he can fit into chapters. We might need a separate book for Mwai Kibaki because of what he has done for our country. And finally, in a quick three years, Your Excellency, we have bade farewell to our second president in 2019 and to our third president now. It is a solemn, it is a heavy moment, but I take pride in the heritage that we have built as a nation of respecting and honoring our leaders in office and protecting and caring our leaders in retirement and in death. And therefore, I am confident that together as a nation, we can stride into the future with a confidence and on the foundation that our forefathers, including Mwai Kibaki, that we rest his soul at this moment. I want to say from me and my family, may Mwai Kibaki's soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, our Deputy President, Honorable William Ruto, for your tribute. At this juncture, it has been the request of the family at this moment in the presence of the remains of this great statesman to receive a special blessing. And so, kindly, still in this context of prayer, I would wish to invite the family of our President Mwai Kibaki to move near the casket as we also join at their request His Excellency the President of this Republic, Uhuru, Mwai, Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta, who is in many ways a son to Honorable President Mwai Kibaki, to move near the casket, we will invite Archbishop Martin Kivuva to be and lead the prayer, and at the same time, we request all the religious leaders here present of all denominations once the family is ready to stand where you are, extend your hand so that all of us from all our faiths can pray for this dear family and also for the soul of our former president. May I invite the choir to sing a song while we prepare for this special moment at the request of the family. Kindly, the family of our former president. We do think that. 
that the first lady can join the president. She is also a daughter. Archbishop Martin Kivuva to move near. May I also at this moment kindly invite the religious leaders here present from all faiths to stand where you are. kindly invite the religious leaders here present of all faiths, wherever you are, to kindly stretch your hand as a prayer is said over the family and over our president. Welcome our Archbishop Martin Kivuva. May the Spirit of the Lord come down. We gather in this special stadium as we pray and ask your blessing upon the family of the late Emilio Mwaikibaki. You have called him to yourself. We pray for the whole family remaining behind and the family of Kenya at large for all that he wished for as a man, as a president and as a father of a family, that unity may prevail, that love may prevail, that Lord, you bless every family in the country as we all today pray for this family and the family of our dear president, Uhuru Kenyatta. We want to pray for peace. We want to pray for understanding. We want to pray for harmony in our families. And we want to pray for that unity in all ways, at family level, religious level, and even at political level. You're a God who comes to us and walks with us like you did with the sons and daughters of Israel in good moments and in tough moments. We want to thank you for all the families you have given us as we all stand here, and those who join us wherever they are, in abroad, in our country, and beyond, that they also be part of this, wishing this country well, as we go through 
ahead and prepare for the final elections of our August ele general elections. Bless the work of our hands and especially for our young people who are now engaging in meaningful work and are working hard to make this country even greater in times to come. For our religious men and women of the different faiths, unity. For all our families, young and old, unity and peace. For all the country we belong, from border to border, peace. And as we pray this day, continue to especially reach out to those who are in difficulty, those who are in far countries like Ukraine and Russia, going through very difficult moments, countries of our neighbors, Sudan, kind as of countries of our neighbors, Somalia, country of our neighbors, DRC, Congo, and others that are going through difficult moments. We walk with you day by day as we ask for those who, who, are, who are facing challenging moments like hunger in areas of Lodwa, areas of Marsabit, areas of Isiolo. Bring us rain, enough rain to raise food. And as we end our day today, to journey this great man to a place of burial, protect us from evil day and night. May your country's peace. And all those members of our excellencies who have come from our neighborhood and our friends, peace to them. We want to remember in particular way also Ethiopia and Eritrea that peace may prevail. This we ask and pray for you are our Father as we call you Father once again and say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from every evil Amen. And the Almighty God bless our country and bless the journey of our faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Archbishop Martin Kivuva. Thank you, the family of our dear former President Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki. Thank you, Your Excellency, for joining the family. And thank you, the religious leaders, for this kind prayer would we'll like to invite the choir to sing a song as we return to our places and ask him kindly and respectfully His Excellency as he returns to the podium. Let us remember to pray for this family. We may be seated, religious leaders. Let us remember to pray for this family as we leave. Let us remember to, through solidarity, support them, choir.
And now, with humility and great respect, may I kindly invite His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Hurum Wigai Kenyatta, to convey to our nation his message of condolences and the family and give his tribute. Your Excellency the President, sir. Thank you very much. The family of our late father and president, Emilio Mwai Kibaki, our clergy, led by His Grace Archbishop Agnolo, our visiting heads of state and government, heads of delegations, fellow Kenyans, ladies and gentlemen, before I give my tribute, I would like at the very onset, on behalf of the people of Kenya, to thank our visitors who have traveled from various parts of our continent and the world to join us in mourning, but also in celebration of the life of one of Kenya's greatest statesmen. So before I give my tribute, I would like on behalf of everybody else to invite three of our visitors. And I would like to begin by inviting His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa. Welcome, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, President Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, and the First Lady, Your Excellency, Deputy President William Ruto, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, heads of states who are here present, as well as those who are representing a number of countries that are represented here. The leadership of the clergy and various leaders of other organizations that are here, your excellencies, ambassadors and high commissioners, as well as the leadership of the armed forces of Kenya, and fellow mourners and fellow Kenyans. As South Africa, and indeed as the Southern African Development Community, we were saddened to hear of the passing of President Mwai Kibaki. The news of his passing touched our hearts, and our hearts and condolences were extended to you as Kenyans. We are here to extend and pay respects and our condolences to all of you as Kenyans and especially to President Uhuru Kenyatta and indeed as well as the Kibaki family. We feel the pain and anguish that you are all going through but at the same time, we also believe that you are all collectively here to celebrate a life of a great statesman. 
and we wish you strength as you go through this moment, but we also wish that you could remember President Kibaki for what he stood for and for what he did for this great nation. My presence here is also to come and comfort my brother, President Uhuru Kenyatta, and also to say that the relations between South Africa and Kenya continue to be strengthened in moments of celebration and in moments of sadness. And I want to thank you, President, for having extended your own condolences to us as South Africans as we recently lost more than 435 people in the floods that engulfed our country. We wish to join you as Kenyans as you remember your dear and beloved departed president. We remember President Kibaki for the leadership that he demonstrated, not only to Kenya, but also to the African continent. We remember him for his commitment to the people of Kenya and indeed to all of us as Africans. But we especially remember him for his leadership in uniting the people of Kenya. And for us as South Africans, we saw him in the mold in which we saw our own first president, President Nelson Mandela, who sought to unite our nation and who planted the seeds of the development of South Africa. And you too have had a great president in President Kibaki who has developed your country and who has also helped to unite the people of Kenya. May you continue remind, remember him with kindness and fondness because indeed he was a great statesman. And we drew a lot of lessons for the way in which he led the people of Kenya and we will forever remember how great he was. May his soul forever rest in peace and we thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And I would now like to invite Her Excellency President Saleh of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia to also pass her tribute and message of condolence. Welcome, my sister. <clears throat> yeah. Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, Excellency First Lady Margaret Kenyatta, Excellencies Heads of States present here, Your Excellency Deputy President William Ruto, the family of former President Mwai Kibaki, our Kenyan brothers and sisters. I'm here today to share the deep grief of our brothers and sisters in Kenya following the passing of uh, former President Mwai Kibaki and convey the heartfelt condolences of the people and government of Ethiopia and of my own to President Uhuru Kenyatta, his government, the bereaved family of late Mwai Kibaki, and to the people of Kenya. President Mwai Kibaki was a true friend of Ethiopia before and after assumption to the presidency, his assumption to the presidency. During his tenure, Ethiopia and Kenya made tremendous strides in elevating our long-standing relations. 
This was seen through the achievement that you have jointly registered, both at the national and regional levels. During his tenure, our two countries signed the Special Status Agreement, laying the foundation for the Lamu Port South Sudan Ethiopia Corridor project, known as LAPSET, as well as the Moyale One Stop Border Post. At the regional level, Kenya, with our regional organization, IGAD, has been very active and host of a series of Somali peace processes held here in Kenya in an effort to find a lasting peace in this sisterly country. And also in the Sudan peace talks, seeking to end two decades of bloody warfare. I would also like to recognize former President Kibaki and his government's commitment to multilateralism that I have been able to witness firsthand. His support to one of the United Nations offices away from headquarters based in uh, Nairobi and uh, its first dedicated director general that I was played a big role in elevating this duty station. Following in his footstep, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta took this commitment to a higher level. In the spirit of the remarkable ties that our two countries have built over the years, we will continue to sustain and strengthen the excellent relations that has lived to this day in order to fulfill the aspirations of our respective uh, populations. As we gather here to pay our last respect to the third president of Kenya, it should not be to mourn, but to celebrate a life dedicated to serving his nation. And it has been so eloquently expressed by previous speakers. May his soul stay in eternal peace. I thank you. As many of you know, the Sudan Peace Accord I was negotiated and signed here in Nairobi was done and concluded during the tenure 